Dion, we thought Ole Miss South Carolina might be a game, given what Ole Miss showed against Kentucky and what South Carolina had shown against Kentucky and LSU and Akron. And this game was never a game. I was in attendance of this game. Incredibly boring. An incredibly boring game. Whether you go to the uh, failed fake punt attempt on South Carolina's first drive, that then led to a very quick Ole Miss touchdown. Then you put Robbie Ashford in the game. He immediately fumbles the ball. Ole Miss goes out again, short field, 14 nothing in the first nine, 10 minutes of that game. Not much happened after that. Ole Miss kind of sat on South Carolina, and South Carolina didn't do anything to really threaten Ole Miss or threaten to threaten Ole Miss at any point. This was a, a I don't want to say a dominant performance by Ole Miss. It was in a sense, but I don't know how much they showed because they didn't necessarily have to. What was your your takeaways from this game? Um, I like, Ole Miss, like I mean, like you said, they like didn't show a ton, and they really didn't have to. I mean, if you're gonna play a team that scores three points, kind of just like make it through the game, right? Um, I just like I'm so sick of like Ole Miss doing this to where it's like it's. It to me, it just feels like a bigger issue within Ole Miss than like it is like wow they played bad, but it's just like there's so many trends within Ole this Ole Miss football team under Lane Kiffin that at a certain point it's like cool, great win, but like why? Why not mm-hmm. just jump down their throats the way you want to? They were able to, I think, move the ball when they wanted to. Up until, like, when they needed to get a third first down, right? There were three of 13 for third downs on this game. Not Certainly not great. Jackson Dart was 14 and 27 passing. Not great. The one thing that I will say that, that helped Ole Miss, the offensive line stood up in a way it did not against Kentucky. The defensive line won the day against South Carolina's offensive line. Like, that was the big question coming out of the Kentucky game for Ole Miss – was how is the line play? Is it good enough to be a playoff team? And South Carolina had a defensive line that is primed to take advantage of your offensive line being bad. And Ole Miss won, won that battle. So, like, to me, that eliminated or, or helped eliminate a potential concern with Ole Miss. doesn't totally take it away. But I do think that I feel better about Ole Miss being who I thought Ole Miss was two weeks ago than I do now or that I did previously. Excuse me. Does that make sense? Like I thought, again, like I, I, thought I was going to have to recalibrate what I thought about Ole Miss after the Kentucky game. But you feel the same way? I feel like I did before the Kentucky game where they're a good team, probably not, you know, not a contender, but a, a playoff contender and solidly in that. I feel better about them as that than I did after the Kentucky game. I feel like I just feel that, yeah, like, I guess that's, like, kind of what I meant by, like, my point, like, the trends thing. Like, I think I agree with you where it's just, like, like, this was maybe a moment where it's, like, hey, change how we feel, you know? You can do something different. Um, And South Carolina basically, like, tried to let you do that, and you just didn't. Um, And I, I, like, to me, that's kind of, like, where it's, like, frustrating, where it's, like, how long until we see something that's different? but at the same, like, the, I don't think there's really ever been a point in the season where I didn't feel like Ole Miss was like, yeah, you're like a borderline playoff team that, like, might beat themselves one game and then miss it, might not, might make it, and then you lose pretty quickly. And mm-hmm. I just feel like they've done nothing so far that really, really makes me feel any different about that. Yeah, I Ole Miss's scoring drives came off of South Carolina miscues. And one big pass play that led that was busted coverage. Guy was wide open on the field, right? And then and yeah. Juice Wells almost had another one, which was just off of busted coverage. I don't. I'm a South Carolina fan, and South Carolina alum, so like I don't want Ole Miss fans to take this the, the other way because I don't mean it as such. Like Ole Miss solidified who they were in this game, which was good. But South Carolina beat themselves as much as Ole Miss beat them. South Carolina averaged 4.9 yards per pass attempt in this game. That's dreadful. That is awful. That is a bad like yards per carry number. 
everything they wanted to do in the passing game was like in the flats and hope that hope Josh Simon or somebody turned it upfield for a first down. Lenora Sellers looked scared to pull the trigger. Receivers could not get open defensively. A lot of personal foul penalties, a lot of offsides. He's almost so many free plays on third down just because Jackson Dart snap count got him to jump offsides and could do all that. And like it crazy. just crazy for a team that had two weeks to prepare. And we talked in the preview, there's a you know, probably should have been four and oh going into this game. That was a horrific performance from the Gamecocks. What a crazy sentence Jackson Dart's snap count got to you guys. Yes. Yeah. Like it was, it was comical. It was, we, South Carolina would get him in third and 15, third and 13. Offsides. And then it turns into a third and eight and they get nine yards. Like it was, it was, it was comically bad. And I'm not going to bring up the amount of um, injury timeouts that Ole Miss had on the game while they were on defense. I'm not going to do that. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bigger man than that. Um, Ole Miss, you know, played to a certain level in South Carolina. This was the worst South Carolina's look since the Old Dominion game. Like that, that was the South Carolina that came out in this game, which was not, not good. Not a good sign. Considering that they, South Carolina has Alabama next and then Oklahoma after that. Both of those on the road. Alabama like, lost, right? Yeah, which, you know, you don't want to play Bama after a loss. No. Yeah, that's what I was asking. Uh, for those that don't know, like for the listeners, I was at a wedding this weekend and only was able to watch the games that I was able, like, had to watch. So, like, the anything else, like, that didn't really get, like, Cal Miami didn't watch it at all. Just saw the, like, saw, like, the last play or whatever. It was. Highlight, <laughs> highlight, it's in the morning, man. We're not, we're not staying up till one o'clock. When you are at a South Carolina Ole Miss game with a five-year-old and a three-year-old who you have to entertain because the football is not entertaining them on the field, you're not staying up till one, two in the morning to watch Miami Cal as great of a comeback as that was. Zero interest. Zero. Zero interest. E- even with, even like after I saw the comeback, I was like six. So like Cal beat an unranked Miami team. We're on to the next, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, South Carolina, I, I bad game, but like this is kind of like to respectfully um, from the South Carolina and the Kentuckys, like this is what separates the SEC. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it's not that the SEC isn't uber talented. Like every team is crazy talented, but there's those teams like the South Carolinas and Kentuckys that, for as talented as they are, you know they got three or four duds in them, at least. And this was a dud, um, and that's why, like I, I saw. Um, a, one of the Kentucky fans in the Discord, I think it was Dwight John Wall, uh, posted this stat that says like Kentucky's like the fourth ranked uh, SEC team with like the most wins in like the last like eight years. I don't, I don't remember what the timeline was, but like it's like Bama, Georgia, eighty five wins, eighty three wins, and then third place is at like fifty. And I, I knew what he was trying to say or something like that, and I was just mm-hmm. like, I was like, bro, this just all this tells me is like we shouldn't fear the SEC the way we do sometimes you know what i mean like that that the big dogs yeah. absolutely we want no smoke with the big dogs but everybody else is crazy talented but boy do they drop some duds yeah i i think i think you fear Ole miss if they get going i think right. like Ole miss is a front running team yeah. i feel confident saying that they're a front running team and south Carolina gave them plenty of opportunities to front run in this game i think if you're texas i think you still fear georgia probably still fear alabama hand up like my bad i forgot about texas and oklahoma obviously because like the you know what i mean like the stat was <laughs> yeah. like it, it, they're brand new to the sec so like when i was thinking in my head like i didn't even I consider f- those two i don't fear oklahoma no i don't fear oklahoma. But, I, I i think you fear georgia texas bama still and i think you fear diego pavia vanderbilt's quarterback he's sick yeah and I, I think that i think that's what you do Ole Miss, though i feel more confident in where they stand than I did coming into this game, certainly. Um, now let's go see if they can maintain this level of play, particularly along the lines of scrimmage. Football season is here. Money is out there to be had in the form of winning bets. And our friends at my book, you want to make it easy for you to do just that. Yeah, and coming into football season, you're going to have games all weekend happening everywhere. And Gregory, where is the only place that Sleepers Media places all bets 
So I can tell you right now, since last February, February 1st to be exact, my bookie is the only place that I have placed a sports bet. I love my bookie. They make it easy. They get you quick payouts. They have awesome promo offers. In fact, card, they've got one right now that football fans everywhere and listeners of this show are going to want to take advantage of. Yeah, using promo code sleepers, that's promo code sleepers, you can take advantage of a 50% instant deposit bonus right now. That's 50% instant deposit bonus up to $1,000 over at MyBookie. Use promo code sleepers and happy betting. Home dogs aren't dogs, they're wolves. I'm trying to flip that into like sport, like home sports books aren't books, they're novels. We'll work on it. That didn't work. Go my bookie promo code sleepers.